All right, guys, are we on again? Am I on? Am I working? Am I here? <laughs> Is the video choppy? Let me know all these things. Let me know in the chat if you guys could hear me, see me. It's better. The quality might be worse. It's better. Yes. Excellent. Very good, guys. All right. So ask me anything you want, anything related to whatever you want, whether it's training, yoga, flexibility, um, progressions, if you're having trouble for figuring out how to proceed in something, relationship advice, nutrition, whatever, you know? Okay, so, so here we go. I'm gonna, uh, there was one person, John, John, he asked a question earlier. He said, he was the first person to ask a question. So here we go. And also, another thing, if the more likes I get, the longer I'm gonna stay on. For every 10 likes, I'm gonna stay on an extra minute after 10 minutes. So smash the like button and here we go. So uh, John asked, he said earlier that he was doing the recommended routine, which is a strength training routine for a few months and then he stopped and he can't find the motivation to start again. So in that scenario, I find that, you know, the problem is oftentimes, for me personally, the problem might be that you feel like, oh, you went from doing nothing and now you have to try to do an entire routine. I would say, start with the warm up. Your goal for tomorrow or today, whenever you have the time, is to just do the warm up. Okay? After you do the warm up, if you want to continue, continue. But the point is don't think that you have to do everything A to Z when, to do it right in that first session. Start with the warm up. If that's all you want to do, great. Next time do the warm up plus a little bit more. And so that is my suggestion to you. And that is what I would do. I would try to break it down into a smaller piece and hopefully that helps. Okay. What is Drew Martin asking? That is a good question. Um, the thoughts on the old version of the recommended routine and the new one. For those not wondering what is the RR, let's switch to, let us switch to, Recommended routine. Where am I? Why am I not in here? Boom, boom, boom. Here I am. So the recommended routine. Wow, my computer is loading slow. Yeah. Let me get myself smaller. Recommended routine is on our body weight fitness, and uh, the difference between the old and the new. Well, the warm-up is completely different. Um, the warm-up is more efficient. It, the previous warm-up was a lot more mindful in a way. It had a lot more um, scapular work and it would get your shoulders in through uh, different ranges of motion, your, your shoulder blades especially. Um, the benefit of this new warm-up is that it does the job and it is um, quicker, I would say. It's a lot faster and it's more efficient. However, the previous warm-up was very thorough, maybe too thorough, one would say. And then it's kind of cool that the new warm-up incorporates the warm-up like uh, with, uh, with the strength training. So the strength training is revamped in the sense that instead of pairing pull-ups and dips, I don't know if you guys could see that, but here it is. Instead of pairing pull-ups and dips, it's pull-ups and squats, and then dips and hinge, hinge progression. So you have a better programmed, uh, the legwork is better programmed, and, it's, and you have overall, you have the core triplet, which did not exist before. That is, um, that is a great addition. 
it's not really necessary to do the core triplet but it will make your abs more robust um, let's see next question Joe asks any chance of more yoga videos soon I miss the January challenge videos well um, oh I should switch here yes Joe um, I don't have the plan right now for more yoga videos I'm working on a hip mobility program which is very much like a yoga video that um, it's like a program that is inspired off of yoga that I spent a lot of time working on. I've been beta testing it with other people for a few months now. So that's coming up. Um, it's a lot of work to make yoga videos, guys. It's a lot of work because I'm very much a perfectionist. And I'm very, yeah, I'm very much a perfectionist and I want the flow to be really good. So. If I'm going to do them, I have to dedicate like a solid month just doing that again. But yeah, I would love to do that. Um, I'm not sure when, but it'll happen again, I'm sure. So, let's read another question. Albie's asking, in your handstand guide, you recommend a back-to-wall shoulder opener, where you push the chest away from the wall. I can't feel the stretch properly. Any tips? Um, put your hands further away from the wall and then make sure you're putting your butt against the wall as well. If your shoulders are open in that direction already, you might not feel the stretch. Um, yeah, but yeah, the further away you put your hands from the wall in general, the stronger that stretch will be. So try that out. Okay, let's see what is the next question. Uh, Drew's asking if we need to incorporate the core triplet with my app. Um, the app is, uh, first of all, the app is created differently. The app is run by somebody else entirely. It's not even run by the subreddit. So um, I'm not sure how it even goes, but it's not just that the core triplet is added. It's also the strength work is different. So check that out, Drew. All right, next question. Voidinakan is asking, using the recommended routine, I want to build more muscle and strength. Should I gain more weight or try to stay the same? Can I lose more weight and still gain strength? Okay, this is a very common question. Um, if you are normal weight, I would recommend eat at maintenance or slightly more than what you need if you want to emphasize building the maximum strength possible okay that doesn't mean you know overeat overeat you don't have to overeat uh, like like a cow you don't have to just eat a ton but in general your body needs the building blocks to get stronger muscle isn't going to get stronger and bigger um, if the building blocks are not there which is food protein right if you are starving yourself or uh, putting yourself in a catabolic state by not eating enough and if there's not enough protein you're only going to get so strong until you reach the neurological limit that your muscles can exert force with you know so the problem is it's very difficult to lose fat and gain muscle after you've been training for a while so you have to just choose one one goal at a time that's why people go through bulking and cutting cycles and yeah that's a, that's a that's a good question but basically the problem with not eating enough it's not really a problem but just be aware when you're not eating enough that you're you're not going to be gaining as much strength 
but you're going to be losing fat. If that's your goal, that's great. All right. So you just have to choose one goal at a time. Do it for one month, two months, whatever you want. Okay. And then, and just stick to it and know that you shouldn't do any extreme. Like if you want to lose fat, don't eat at an extreme deficit. Don't say, Hey, I'm just going to lose fat as fast as possible. And, um, you know, I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to eat minimal amounts. No, because your body needs protein and it's going to pull that protein out from your muscles to do it. Because your body, every cell in your body is constantly regenerating and rebuilding, uh, reproducing, all that stuff, all of it. It's happening right now, which is insane to think about. And the body needs protein to continue that process and your muscles are the greatest source of protein. So. If you're not eating enough, the body's going to pull it from somewhere else. Um, also for me personally, if I don't eat, if I eat at too steep of a deficit, uh, old injuries start to come back, like, like different pains will start to appear. So um, try to eat the appropriate amount is my, um, is my suggestion. And if you want to lose fat and you want to try to eat less, eat slightly less and be patient, okay? And if you really want to guarantee that you're putting in the work and it's going to be going in the right direction, count your calories. At least count them for a week, all right? And that will make you aware of how much you're actually eating, all right? So, guys... Um, I hope the stream is better. We've been going for a little while. Let me look for the next question. Um, hmm. Ted's asking, what are the consequences of working out throughout the day instead of a single session? Honestly, I've been doing it this way for the past few months, working out like constantly, not constantly, but Instead of just doing one solid session for an hour, I'm working out every day, many times a day, doing different sets of different exercises. And it's great, honestly. I've been, you know, the, the, the drawback is it takes more time. If you have, you know, you need the freedom to be able to do that. If you have the freedom to do that, go for it. If that is what helps you stay consistent, go for it. Consistency is extremely important. That's probably the most important thing, okay? The programming is important, but um, if you're not consistent, if you can't follow the program because it's unrealistic or sustainable to your goals, then then yeah, that's, uh, that's not going to work. So... <laughs> Um, there's that saying, all roads lead to Rome. They do if you are consistent, okay? So, let's see for the next question. And sorry if I missed any other questions. I don't think I did. You guys smash that like button so that I could continue doing this stream. Because otherwise, I'm going to end the stream shortly. Let me see how many likes we're at. John is asking, I'm currently trying the Russian fighter pull-up program, but I'm finding it quite tough. Well, hopefully you are having rest days. And actually the more important thing, the more important thing is to, um, sorry guys, I was distracted. The most important thing is that you start from the num your number of reps should not be uh, so the starting number of reps should not be absolute failure. You should be at like let's say you could only do eight pull-ups total. Don't don't start your session with eight, seven, six, five, four. Start it at six reps. Okay, start it at seven or maybe even five because maybe i don't know maybe you're not used to doing five sets of work right so that is my 
advice, John, is to you, maybe you started at the wrong number of reps or you just need some more rest days because I know the program says do it for five days and then take one rest day, do it for five days. Uh, if you're doing other things or you're, you're stressed out about life, I mean that could be too much. If your recovery is not on point, that can, that can hurt you. Don't follow a program extremely uh, close like as if like as if the program knows who you are. The program doesn't know who you are. It does, the program doesn't know what your rate of recovery is like. Okay, so if you need more rest days, do it. All right. What is another question? By the way, guys, the stream is okay. I think I think it is. Okay. Chop Chop is asking, how does one mix rings and high intensity interval training throughout the week? I mean, honestly, just high intensity internal uh, hit, high intensity interval uh, training is very efficient. Just do it on the days that you're not doing the rings training or do it afterwards. It's not very complicated. Just throw it in there, guys. <laughs> don't don't overcomplicate things. Uh, Pavel, can I show us my, can I show Medax? No, I can't show Medax right now. I don't want to disturb her from her slumber. <laughs> and let's see, what about my diet? What do you eat? Uh, in general, so I'm following a low carb diet. Um, it's not exactly a ketogenic diet right now, but I, I've learned so much from the ketogenic diet that I'm naturally always doing a very low carb diet naturally. Uh, around Monday through Friday and then if on Saturday and Sunday I'm I have social events uh, you know hanging out with friends or whatever or family and there's food involved I'm not gonna restrict myself like I used to to the same degree I'm a little more lax that doesn't mean I'm eating a high carb diet necessarily but uh, it it's still gonna be relatively low and yeah, that's about it. I found that that is the most sustainable way for me to live as of late. So, yeah. All right, Matthew's asking a question. When you start an L-sit, do you lift into a tuck and extend your legs or lift into the full L-sit? I find it hard to lift into a full L at once, but can hold it if extending from the tuck. Okay. I personally, I just can, I can just get into the L sit straight into the full version immediately, and that's just because I did it for so long and so often. You will be able to as well um, if you are very strong with your L sit, but maybe it's just a habit that you do. You know, if you can extend from a tuck. To the full L sit, and you wanna, and your full L sit is strong. I mean, it should be like you should have a goal of 20 seconds in that position, and then eventually you can add ankle weights, and then that that should get your L sit very strong. You should be able to press into it into a full L sit then. Okay. So let's see what other questions I got. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. By the way, thanks guys for the comments and thanks for paying attention. <laughs> It's, it's a little nerve-wracking to do these live streams because of technical issues in the beginning, but it's, it's kind of cool. So, so, Leo's asking, my girlfriend's been doing the recommended routine for two months, but can't seem to progress in the pull-ups. She's struggling with the negatives, and, they don't, and we don't have bands. Okay, so, listen. Don't give up. This is a huge struggle. I know it's demoralizing. Um, it's really, really tough to get the pull-ups when it's really, it feels hard. I know it feels impossible, uh, but you will progress. Work on the scapular pull-ups and the arching active hangs, okay? That'll strengthen the bottom portion of your pull-ups. And with those, um, and then like 
you could maybe even just focus on that for like one or two weeks or your girlfriend if this is about your girlfriend and then and then in regards to doing the negatives make sure you're over the bar for a few seconds and then as you're going down when you're doing a negative pull up or any negative exercise really just a negative phase as you're going down tell her to keep trying to pull up as she's going down so it's not just like uh it's not just that you're going down it's more like you're going down but you're trying to resist going down and actually trying to pull up the entire time okay that cue helps a lot that in combination with doing the scapular pulls is very helpful okay and again don't be demoralized it takes time sometimes even just taking a week or two off and then trying it you, you might find yourself really strong so you never know don't give up thanks john thank you leo for your verifying that the stream is good all right let's see next question Maya's asking, if I'm doing an exercise and my muscles hurt a lot afterwards, should I just keep doing them until it no longer hurts or should I stop? Um, okay, so if you mean like if it hurts the next day or the day after or the day after that, that is typical soreness, uh, delayed onset muscle soreness. But if it's your joints that are hurting like the elbows or the inside the shoulder or your knees that is not normal and that is something you should be aware of and probably stop doing that exercise that's aggravating the joints but if it's the muscle belly like if it's you know the forearm the biceps outside the shoulder the chest you know the major muscles if that's burning up or you're feeling sore there that's okay you can do a workout it's actually recommended to continue working out through the soreness i know it might be really painful you might uh, you might want to do a lighter intensity workout if it's extremely sore so and that could help dissipate the soreness quicker actually so yeah um ayush says i missed his question sorry let me see what he says he says can i add the floreo projects locomotion and movement with the recommended routine for the week uh for people who are not sure what that is that is the floreo project which i will show right now If you just go Floreo project and then should be the first link. This is basically a culmination of everything. Why is this like this? There we go. Floreo project is a combination of everything Ido Portal has created all in it's just I try to organize everything. Okay, so to answer your question, um, sorry, what was your question? Can you do the locomotion and movement with the RR for the week? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, you can. Although there are uh, some hardcore strength uh, workouts within those workout days on the Floreo project. If it's just the locomotion and uh, skill work type stuff, you can probably incorporate it just fine, you know. You might also want to do it on a different day. Um, you're going to have to, you know, they're not meant to, they're not meant to go together inherently, but they could, you know, if the, if the workout is asking you to do a bunch of push-ups, if you already did push-ups, you probably shouldn't do that, for example, you know? Okay, moving on. All right. 
Uh, Albert's asking, do you climb? No, not regularly. Um, every time I've done it, I've loved it. I'm actually going to go to a climbing gym probably this week. <laughs> so um, I look forward to it every time. It's really fun. And yeah. Uh, Tom's, uh, Tom is thanking me. Thank you. I'm glad I've helped you get in shape and have fun doing it. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Gemma is asking, what do you think about Chris Heria, Heria's training methods? Would you use circuit style methods with short rests between exercises that work the same muscle groups? Honestly, I've watched his videos. Um, they're not very good in terms of real being realistic. Like I've watched his, I've watched his own follow along videos sometimes where he makes the workout extremely difficult, right? You go from like, you do one exercise for the abs and then, an, and then wait 20 seconds and then do another exercise for the abs and then another one. And it's just like, I'm watching him doing it and he is done. Like he is like, and he's a strong individual and he's struggling with it at the end. And then he says, okay, just repeat that like three or four more times and it's like well that's pretty intense some of them don't seem realistic you know and i'm not sure if that's ex that's how he trains either i don't know it could be how he trains but circuit style training for strength training is not the way to go all right um, if endurance is your goal maybe maybe it is but in regards to strength training you're not going to be able to push heavy weight or your body weight if you're not well rested in from the previous set so if you want to exert maximal amount of force you need to rest the circuit style doesn't work as well and yeah that's just my that's just my thoughts on that so um blue blue is asking are front lever rows a good pro progression after the feet elevated rows um to me personally they are they are very good um there are many other ways to go at it however you might find that front lever rows are very difficult even though you can do horizontal rings rows the front lever rows might be very difficult in that scenario i would work on one arm ring rows as a progression to build that up you know, because maybe your front lever is not strong or maybe you're just not, don't, you know, maybe you're not good in that position. But one arm ring rows are a good progression after horizontal two armed ring rows. I find that that evens out any balances as well. Um, yeah. New Houseification is thanking me and saying your programs are great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Matthew is asking, do you train your legs with calisthenics as well, or do you utilize weights for that? Uh, personally, honestly, uh, I'm not doing either. I'm bicycling every day. I'm fine. I live near the mountains and I am climbing every day, five to 10 miles. And my goal right now is to do 20 to 60 mile bike rides in a month. So that's just me personally I'm strengthening my legs with bicycling so that is my focus lately other but other than that if I do want to train my legs like sometimes I work out with my friends and uh, like in that scenario I would go for split squats uh, split squats are really great okay I usually do do it with the back but elevated and it's a good stretch too at the same time so um, if you're yeah if you're looking for a leg workout with just your body weight that's great and you could also add weights to the split squats okay uh, Matthew says he's gonna be joining me in the grease uh, grease the groove style pike push-ups uh, excellent <laughs> Uh, Arico is asking, how long would you assume someone needs to master the press handstand if practicing daily? 
So the press handstand is a, is a doozy. <laughs> if you have the flexibility, you're going to be able to do it much faster than someone who doesn't. If you have the pike, uh, if you have a very good pike position, like if you could hinge at the hips and do a forward fold and you can put your palms flat or further, um, you're going to be able to do the pike press handstand, for example, better than someone who can't do that at all. If someone doesn't have the flexibility, usually what people will try to do is the straddle press handstand. And if you have the pancake splits, the pancake splits, like if you have a chest to floor pancake split, then you'll be able to do the stra straddle press handstand much faster than someone who doesn't have the flexibility to in the pancake splits because you're going to need a lot more shoulder strength, okay? Because you're going to have to lean forward more to compensate for the fact that your hips can't go over your shoulders as easily. For someone who has ridiculously good pancake splits, they can just set their hands down in a straddle and their hips will be already over their shoulders and all they need to do is a leg raise, okay? So, flexibility. Work on your pancake splits, okay? That's what I would recommend if you want to speed up the straddle press the handstand so that it's not just strength. Uh, Captain Chile and Fox, he's asking, what pull up bars do you recommend for indoors? Um, honestly, I just use an Iron, Iron Gym brand pull up bar. It works just fine, uh, it just hooks up around the molding just fine. Um, Albert says, uh, I like your slackline videos. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I'm glad that your sprained ankle is going to get better. <laughs> Uh, Ven Greatest is asking, uh, any recommendations on progressions after ring dips, push-ups, and pull-ups? Honestly, this depends on your goals. This is a very difficult question to answer. Uh, you're saying, should I try to progress to one-arm push or pull, or should I work more on static holds? So, one-arm push-ups, I don't like one-arm push-ups. You can never do them without twisting your body. It's just an awkward... It's just an awkward... It's just an awkward exercise, a one-arm push-up. It can look, you know, impressive to someone, but it's not that insane. Um, if you would want to do a one-arm pull-up, do that. That's a great goal. That will get you really strong. <laughs> um, in regards to pushing, I would recommend uh, pseudo plant push-ups, for example, or overhead. Um, overhead pressing strength using pike push-ups and handstand push-ups so yeah um, in regard and in regards to the ring dips you know if you're not doing them with the rings turned out the entire time start doing that that's a very very good way to make your dips uh, more challenging yeah all right let's see here next question Vasilas is saying I can't think of I can't think of a question now. I just wanted to come by and say thanks. You've inspired a lot of people. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> Comments like that keep me going. So, uh, Blue Blue saying uh, that he or she will try the one-arm rows. Awesome. And that they are working on pseudo planche push-ups. And they're progressing on leaning more. But at some point, not going to be able to lean. Oh, elevated feet. Yes, absolutely. Elevate your feet. You can even start doing that now. Elevate your feet to shoulder height in the in the pseudo planche push-ups. Definitely. It'll also get your body in the proper planche plane when your feet are elevated rather than it being down. So definitely elevate the feet. That's a very good uh, thing to do. Toby is asking, do you practice yoga daily? Absolutely. Every day. 
I mean, I'll usually do something in the morning, something, it just depends how I'm feeling, but I'll definitely be doing something by the evening time, especially. I don't have to do it every day, but most of the days, absolutely, I am doing it. Um, Arinko is asking, do you have a progression video on flexibility? I probably do. Um, <laughs> although flexibility is so complicated, um, you should you could check out my yoga challenge. I did a I did a yoga challenge. There are 20 yoga videos in from January of this year, 2018. Just go through those yoga videos. You know, if you can't do a pose or if it's becoming too stressful. Just go into child's pose or take a rest and then continue at your own pace throughout those videos, okay? Joshua, I already answered that question um, on the latest recommended routine update. Uh, honestly, the recommended routine is great. It is an awesome... The updates are great, guys. There's a... Uh, yeah, it's a little more work to figure out how to do this new program, but hey, it's, it's worth it. <clears throat> Arinko, mainly hip flexor for the handstand press. Um, it's not really hip flexor. It's, if you're doing a straddle press, it's going to be your hamstrings, your adductors, your hip, your hip flexors are going to be in your hips are going to be in hip flexion. So the hip flexors are not what need to be lengthened. They're going to be contracted. They need active compression, they need strength. Uh, but your glutes, your all your posterior chain, your glutes, your back, your hamstrings uh, and adductors are what need to be lengthened. If you are familiar with the pancake splits and you are pretty, if you have a good forward lean on your pancake splits, there is a good video on Tom Merrick's channel with Emmett Lewis about uh, use applying ballistic stretching to your pancake splits. That is a great uh, little thing. But if you are if you don't have a good pancake splits or you can't even sit upright, then it's not for you. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to be wrapping this up. It's been at least half an hour, I'm sure. And um, let's see what else we got here. I'm a fan of your videos that focus on the mental aspect of fitness. Okay, thank you. I'm so glad so many people came in. Let's see. Uh, Captain Chilean Fox is asking, if I have triceps tendon pain when using weights, what can I do instead to build that muscle? Hmm. That's tough. I honestly don't know. I can't answer this question online. This is a very... You have to go to a physical therapist. But the general rule of thumb is that you have to do exercises that don't hurt. And the physical therapist will help you figure that out. And uh, yeah. That's, that, that's something you should definitely see with a professional. I don't want to give you bad advice. So... Anyway, all right. Looks like uh, looks like I've answered everyone's questions and I've caught up to the log. I think I will end the session here today. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and I will see you soon. I will do a video soon. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and thanks for all the great comments. Really awesome. Thank you.